MMA Odds Breaker. Uh, today we're talking about Pat Curran. Getting ready to find a Bellator card. Coming to be against uh, Patricia Freire. It's main event. Obviously, uh, Muhammad Lawal, and uh, uh, he's had a couple of opponent changes as well, or, or had a couple of opponent changes, uh, Sursa, um, for the co-main event. It's, um, I want to go back for a second to Daniel Strauss. I want to revisit that for a second. You lose a decision. Shortly thereafter, uh, November and March, you fight him again, and you submit him uh, in the fifth round. It takes a while, but you finally catch him. Obviously a tough opponent. It was a very game fight, both fights. Um... Obviously, this, the finish, you know, the win goes your way the second time around. You mm-hmm. get a submission, which is obviously what you were looking for the first time, but you finally get it the second time. But what else was different during that time? Let's take away the win and loss. Like, just break down the fight from a scientific standpoint. What was different between those two fights? You know, it really, when it comes down to it, it's just my mentality. Um, you know, I, I just went into that fight with a different mindset. Um, I, I was at a better place, and, um, you know, I was suffering – um, from from some uh, depression and anxiety issues when I uh, lost to him the first time, and um, you know I was able to conquer that and, and move past that, and you know, you know, you know, everyone knows, you know, this is it's all mental. This fight is just being a fighter. It's it's pretty much ninety percent mental. You have to go in there, you know, one hundred percent confident, knowing that you're going to win, believing in yourself, and I just didn't have that um, going into that fight with Strauss the first time. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not one with excuses, but I'm just kind of talking from, um, you know, from my heart and, and, and what I truly believe. And, you know, the second time around when I got the belt back, I went in there with, you know, my attitude of I'm going to win. I'm going to get my, my uh, belt back. I went in there motivated, determined. And, you know, that made a, a big factor, and a big change, you know, uh, for that last fight. So it was definitely my uh, mentality. And is it medication? Is it uh, therapy? Is it, I mean, what food? Like, what is it? What do they do for you? Yeah, I, I definitely got on, um, you know, I, I went to therapy a couple times. I was able to sit down and talk with the doctor and he pretty much just explained what was going on. I, you know, just listened to my thoughts and told me his thoughts on, on what he thought was uh, was going on in my life and, and just made me realize, okay, I have these issues. Now I have to you know, fix them. And, and he got me on uh, Lexipro 10 milligrams once a day. And, you know, that has really helped with anxiety and depression. And um, I'm, I'm still taking that to this day, but it's all about making the changes, the right changes in your life as well. So, you know, I got on a routine. I'm, I, I moved um, houses. I, I cleaned up my life a little bit. I mean, I just small changes here and there outside of the gym make a huge difference. And, um, it's not going to happen overnight, but little by little, I, I'm noticing myself, you know, changing. I'm, I'm getting, you know, just mentally, I'm, I'm, I'm happier. I'm in a better place, and you know, training is going great. And you really have to, uh, I guess, you really have to be happy, you know, outside of the cage to, uh, you know, enjoy your life and and just continue to keep climbing that ladder and keep chasing your dream. And um, you know, I was able to get that back, uh, thankfully, and you know, I. You know, I, it was to a point where I considered of even dropping out of the sport and not even, you know, participating in MMA anymore. Um, you know, that's how bad it got. But I was able to, uh, you know, correct that, you know, with my help of my management company, you know, Sucker Punch Entertainment and, um, and my cousin Jeff Curran. Um, they got me back on track and, and um, you know, I was able to uh, get that motivation and that drive back. Now, is Lexipro something that you had to stop taking before the fights? Is it a banned substance, or is it is it fine to take all the way through all the way through the fights? Um, it's not a banned sub- substance, so I'm able to take this uh, pretty much throughout my whole training camp, <laughs> leading into the fight, after the fight. It's one of those medications where it takes about a month or two to really start working, and, and, and you have to take it for a long period of time. So, uh, but yeah, it's not banned, and um, I'm able to take it leading into the fight. Well, because you know, there's, there's always there's medication out there that, uh, um, depending, like state of California, for example, you can take either Adderall, which is banned, or you can take marijuana, which is banned for your attention deficit disorder in adults. So it's like either way, either medication, you're stuck. You can't take either one because they're both are banned. Then with with different with different medications and different things, there's you know for depression, obviously there's different stuff. You're taking Lexipro, so I'm never sure what what we're allowed to fix and we're not allowed to fix. It's kind of it's it's kind of like where the commissions. And the doctors don't talk sometimes to each other, you know, where there's a medication need for a particular ailment and you can't take it because you're part of this, this fighting commission. It's, it's kind of sometimes ridiculous and sometimes I understand it, but I'm still trying to 
you know, navigate my way through all the medications that, that are legal and, and illegal and why they are. So I'm glad that you're able to stay on yours and, and be all the way through it. Now, with that case, you, you're obviously going to have a much better training camp. You're in a better living situation. You've got things dialed in. But you still got to break down Patricio as, a, as an, uh, an opponent. When you're watching tape, when you see him, how do you feel this fight's going to go? And if you were in his training camp, trying to train to get ready for you, what would you be telling him with this skill set to do to try to, to, try to win, win against you? Yeah, it's kind of hard to say when I put myself in his position, but I, I got a good feel for him. You know, I, I beat him pretty much at his game. I outstruck him as, uh, you know, our last fight. And, you know, he's I, – I feel that type of fighter is real stubborn and he wants to, uh, you know, pretty much say that he's the better fighter, better striker, and I think he's going to, you know, want to come out and slug with me again. So I, uh, I, see, I see his camp – being more focused on boxing, you know, definitely, you know, tightening up his, uh, his, his hands, his striking game and, uh, um, pretty much not really changing too much, you know, but I'm expecting him, you know, he could shoot in, you never know anything could happen in the fight. I'm, I'm prepared for, for any, anything I'm, I'm, re I'm ready to react, but I really just see him working on his boxing and, and trying to, uh, you know, fix the mistakes he made in, in our first fight. Do you, are you a guy that looks at tape to try to plan for each specific individual and go, look, this is the guy I'm fighting next, and here's my game plan for this guy? Or are you a fighter that looks at tape and goes, okay, I kind of get the gist, and I'm going to do what I'm going to do anyway because I need to improve myself? Or, or like, which way are you in, in your, well, your training camp? It, it's kind of um, – I'm kind of doing a little bit of both. Um, I, I, I just recently switched camps. I'm, I'm down in Dallas right now training oh. with Team Takedown. Okay. And they're very big on studying and reviewing and, and watching uh, footage. So I've been – that's that's a huge part of my camp right now. And we've really broke him down and, and watched a lot of his fights and um, and watched my last fight with him. So, um, yeah, we're, we're definitely breaking him down, breaking our last fight down, picking, you know, parts and pieces apart to uh, figure out, you know, what can we do to capitalize on on this part or, or on, on this combination. And um, – you know, it's 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 only going to make me better. I'm I'm seeing a lot of uh, a lot of mistakes I made in that first fight, where I could have been scoring a lot more points. Even though it was a really close fight, I know this fight is going to be a way different. I'm gonna I'm I'm just going to be a different different animal coming into this fight. I, I have a different game plan, different mentality, and and uh, you know I know for a fact I'm, I'm I'm looking for the finish. I'm always looking for the finish, but uh, I have I'm pretty much very confident I'm going to finish him this time. Did you, when you said you moved houses, did you move houses to Dallas or did you just move houses up in Illinois? I, uh, I moved houses in Illinois. So oh, okay. Okay. long story short, I was, I was living in a very small house with, uh, with a couple of roommates and I was, I was in the basement at the time. It was real clean, real nice, but then it, it got flooded a couple of times. It just turned out to be a really shitty situation. I was able to get out of that house, upgraded, got to a really nice house with me and my roommates. And then um, this opportunity came up where I was able to uh, come down to Dallas to help uh, Chas Kelly uh, get ready for his uh, upcoming fight this weekend. And I decided to uh, to stay and, and do my camp here because it was just it was too good of an opportunity to pass up. And it was a very hard decision for me to make. I love everybody at Team Current, but this is another change in my life. I felt like I needed to make to grow yeah. as a fighter. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's – it's it's been for the best, and at the same time, my parents live 30, 35 minutes away from uh, Team Takedown. Oh. So, right now, I'm staying at my parents' house, which is is great. You know, I love being back. You know, close with my family. I've been gone for the last like seven years, living in Chicago, and now I'm I'm doing a, a training camp with with them, being a part of it. And you know, it's it's been great. This is uh, probably one of the happiest and and stress free training camps I've ever had, and. Uh, that makes a big uh, it's, it's a big difference for a fighter when you're going into a fight stress free, motivated, happy, just in a great place mentally, and, and that's where I'm at right now. For those at home that don't know what Team Takedown is, it, it's uh, it's the home of Johnny Hendricks, uh, the welterweight champ for the UFC, and, and uh, Ted Williams' brainchild of taking wrestlers and, and making them professional MMA athletes, and, and that brush, brain trust has come through. Obviously, Mark Lehman, still the head coach. How many different phrases and, and weird tactics is Mark? Because Mark's I trained with Mark. For a couple different fights, a great tactician, but he always has to come up with a different a different phrasing for everything, so that the corner doesn't know what what you're talking about. Is it, is it, is it was a little bit of the studying of the, of oh, yeah. the, of the tape yeah. going, Mark? What are we calling this thing? Kind of kind of too. Yeah, you know, he when he's calling out these names, I'm kind of just looking at him like, you know, 
lost. I really don't know what he's talking about when he shows it. Like, oh, okay, yeah, I know. I kind of I understand now. Like, he has yeah. to show me. He, he's he's a very intelligent, for great coach. I'm, I'm I'm love working with him. But yeah, they uh, they use different phrases for different moves, just so you know other camps don't know what you're talking about. And and that's just uh, being here over time. I'm picking it up. I'm learning the phrases, and uh, you know we're we're all clicking and all working on the same page now. And, um, and Mark, you know, like I said, he's, he's, uh, he's a genius. You know, he likes to break down fights. He does a lot of studying and, and a lot of, uh, not just Mark, but all the coaches over at team takedown, just study, study, study film. And, and it works out perfect for me because I, I learn a lot just from watching. And then when we watch these footages, we go and actually drill them in class and, you know, just the combination of the two, I'm really, really picking up here. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely seeing my game, uh, you know, get better. And, and um, you know, like I said, I just, I, I feel like this is the best decision for me as a fighter right now. Well, obviously it's working, Pat. You seem, you seem happy. You seem a little snappy too. And then, uh, and I love team take that. I love those guys down there. So I think you're in a great training camp uh, as well. I mean, those guys are, you couldn't be in a better situation. So thanks for coming on here with MMA Oddsbreaker. Have fun. You know, you don't need good luck anymore. You're at a stage now in your career, and now it's just about having fun. Have fun out there on uh, September 5th in uh, in uh, Connecticut when you're fighting for Bellator. It's going to be a great card, and I can't wait to see you fight again. Awesome, man. Thanks for having me, and, uh, yeah, that's all it is. It's just you got to have fun. you got to enjoy life, and, you know, don't don't take it for granted, you know. Just make the most of it. All right, pal. Take care, man. We'll speak soon. All right. Thank you. Bye.